Johnny, what the dickings do you think you're playing at? You're calling me all throughout the evening, all through the night. I've got very, very, very exciting news for you, Bradley. You know I wouldn't disturb your lockdown without good reason or free beer. Well, this is even better than free beer. This is our 100,000 subscriber plaque. What? It arrived. It has arrived. Where's mine? <laughs> Hundred thousand subs, mate. That's unbelievable. It's taken a while to get here, but wow! <laughs> Only took eight years. Um, yeah, it's an amazing achievement. Thank you, everyone out there, and thank you, Bradley. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Virtual cheers. We got to come up with an amazing way of celebrating this, and I've got an idea, but I need your help. Get drunk. Well, that I mean, yeah, I don't need your help with that. Don't worry. Um, I want to brew something special for our next homebrew episode. Ooh. And I feel like we should do something for all the amazing subscribers out there that have helped us get to that amazing number um, and get this weapon of a plaque. Um, so I've had one idea, which is to brew a 100 IBU beer. One IBU for every thousand subscribers. Oh, I love it. I love it. Let's hope we don't lose subscribers now. <laughs> I could, I, we can just let it age out and let the IBUs dissipate. Um, there's two issues with this idea. One is 100 IBUs is a really bitter beer, so we'll have to work our way around that, but it has been done before. And two, it doesn't really scream YouTube. So we've got a branding issue, basically. Yeah. Um, when I think of YouTube, uh, I just think of the colour red, basically. The YouTube play button is red, the logo's red. Can we make a red style that's got 100 IBU? So a red IPA is actually a really good idea. If we want to go to 100 IBU, then we need something sweet to balance that out. You know I've got a sweet tooth, Johnny, so I'm all ears on this one, mate. So the next question is, who are we going to work with to come up with this recipe? Because I've never brewed anything that bitter. It's probably going to need to be quite strong as well to, to give it the body and the character. So we need a brewery that makes great strong beer, great bitter beer, and has some experience with, uh, with red IPA. The first brewery that springs to mind for me is is probably Siren. Yeah. So they, they make amazing multi-complex beer, amazing hoppy beer. And actually, we had a red IPA or red ale, a strong red ale, when we did our live show with them a couple of months ago. It was delicious. It was on nitro. Whoa. Smooth. Right. Well, let's go with Siren. That was easy. I'll approach those guys. Before I do, when you think of a red IPA, what kind of flavours are you expecting so I can, I can get some ideas together? Hmm. I guess, like, as opposed to a sort of regular uh, West Coast sort of vibe, I would expect a bit more of a kind of caramel vibe. So a bit more of that caramelly kind of flavour going on. Okay, so malt-wise, I'm thinking lots of Munich malt, biscuitiness. I'm thinking a tiny bit of dark malt that might help with the colour, maybe a tiny bit of carafa, but not much. Hopping. What kind of hops would you... What flavours would you want to get from your hops to go with, with you know... Kind of caramel, brown toast, um, nuttiness as well. I think we'll get some kind of cashew nutty sweetness in there. I'd quite like some sort of resiny piney notes in there to go with all of that. Getting like some orange peel flavours, like caramelised orange peel kind of stuff. Just like Negroni almost kind of vibes. A Negroni, yeah, that's very orange and incredibly bitter. I think it's too bitter for me, Johnny, a Negroni. <laughs> but um, that's a really good shout. I reckon let's get some Simcoe in there because Simcoe's also got that kind of creme caramel kind of thing that I think would really suit loads of caramel, uh, caramel. Amarillo for the orange. And then I'm thinking, I'm thinking let's bring a new hop in. Let's try Idaho 7, which is like, I've always perceived it as basically marmalade. Wow. Slightly okay. sweet, juicy marmalade is, is what I get from it. Um, which I think is awesome for West Coasters and could be amazing for red IPAs. I love it, man. I'm going to have a, a citrus, burnt citrus caramel bomb. That, I mean, that is that would be what I'd want you to say when you taste this. Those are exactly the flavour notes I want to go for. You've got to nail this one, man. I believe in you! With Brad's faith sustaining me, I started playing around with one of the most complicated recipes I've ever made. 
and immediately got worried about how many hops I'd have to add to reach 100 IBU while still getting lots of aroma and flavour. Hops added at the start of the boil give bitterness but little character, while hops added at the end give lots of character but little bitterness. I was looking at over 10 grams per litre before I even dry hopped, which risks nasty astringency and vegetal flavours. To get around that, I started looking at CO2 extract, a super concentrate of bitter hop compounds that would mean I only had to add 5 millilitres. I'd never used it before though, so I added that to the endless questions for Sean Knight, head brewer at Siren Craft Brew. So 100 IBUs is a lot of IBUs for beer, um, so it's great that you're trying that, but you will be putting a lot of, like if you're using pellets or even holy, you'll be putting a lot in to get that amount of IBUs. Um, so CO2 extract really helps in that. It's also a lot more efficient. When should I be adding these hops to balance lots of aroma and a bit of IBU and uh, lots of IBU without becoming astringent? So how would you spread that across the boil? Getting hops in, you know, towards the end of the boil, you want this red IPA to have a lot of flavor as well. So getting them in 15, 10, five minutes before the whirlpool. I think you've also looked at cooling your whirlpool down to 80 degrees, which is a good technique for keeping aroma. You still will get a bit of bitterness coming from those, but hopefully your calculation takes that in. That'll be a lot less than if you put them in at 100 degrees. I'm also still keen to really dry hop it as well. It's, it's an IPA, it's 2021. It's not an IPA without a hefty dry hop. Um, how much bitterness... Do you get any bitterness from dry hops? Like the jury still seems to be kind of out. When you're dry hopping, you're adding alpha acids, the compound called beta acids in, um, in hops. Sometimes hops will, the alpha acids will oxidize a bit and they kind of contribute to what can be perceived as bitterness, but it won't actually measure on a traditional um, way of measuring. Abuse. So you'll pick up like bittering compounds and um astringencies depending on what hops you use in dry hopping and how you dry hop but they won't measure as IBUs and they might not even come across as bitterness in the beer i guess then we we, we come to how i'm going to balance that um that 100 IBUs um so my first thought is to balance sweetness we should have uh, to balance bit bitterness we should have some sweetness so i was intending to leave a little bit of residual sweetness behind um, so the best way of doing that, along with the malt, using caramel and stuff like that, would be, you know, should I should I mash a little bit higher than I would for a, a normal IPA? Or I think so. Your your crisp, if it's got some caramel in and stuff like that, should help to see to kind of retain some of the unfermentable sugars. Mashing at a higher temperature is good, but I wouldn't go over seventy, like. I think, you know, high 60s should be... 67, should be 68 fine. kind of vibe, yeah. Yeah, I think that should be, as long as your system works well, and that, that's kind of where we would sit. It's, it's um, never been the system that's let us down before, it's always been me, so... <laughs> Just, just come in from the sea there, Brad. Talk to me, Johnny. I'm, I'm emitting incredibly strong orange vibes. I'm sending them out via the power of the internet at you. I'm, I'm not sure how much of your vibes we need because having come up with the recipe with Sean, we've got all the orange vibes going on. Proper Negroni in a, in a, in a pint glass. We're basically doing like a dogfish head 60 minute IPA with just additions of hops all the way through the boil. And we're gonna have to use CO2 extract to get to that bitterness. Um, and then we're still going to add about 300 grams of hops to it. It's an absolute monster, Bradley. I feel like the way you're describing it, Johnny, you're almost like uh, Vin Diesel in Fast and the Furious, adding sort of knots or whatever it is they, they put in the car to like make it go super fast. You're putting in extra bitterness throughout. It is. CO2 extract is the nos of the brewing world. Um, so yeah, I'm doing it tomorrow. It's going to be one hell of a brew day, so I'd love to say I'll call you in the midst of it, but I'm weighing out about eight different hop additions, so I'm probably not going to have time. But trust me, Bradley, this is going to be delicious, uh, and I can't wait for you to try it. I've got the faith. I'll see you soon.
Okay, so it's brew day. Now, after a whole load of emails sent to Sean and that conversation that we had just to finalize everything, I've come up with probably the most complicated malt bill that I've ever put together. So we're very much in the unknown in so many ways with this video. But it starts with a very simple base. I'm swapping out pale to put Munich in and that's just going to make sure that I get loads of colour, loads of biscuitiness um, and loads of alcohol at the same time because Munich malt is you know just as fermentable as a straight up pale. So I've got three kilograms of it in there and then in this second bag, Malt Miller, the amazing Malt Miller, have very kindly mixed everything together for me. So in there is three kilograms of my Munich malt, and then I've gone for, at my batch size, which is gonna be a 20 litre keg in the end, um, we've got some Caramunich, Munich, some uh, Crystal Medium, some English Caramel Malt, um, some DRC, kind of like an English version of, of Belgian Special B, so lots of fruity plum caramel, date kind of notes, really fruity malt that also hopefully give me lots of reddish colour, I'm hoping. Um, and then just 50 grams um, of Carafa Special Type 3, so a really dark roasted um, speciality malt that's going to bring a little bit more deep red hue to it, but hopefully almost no roast character. I want zero roast character in this beer. Hopefully I'm going to hit a uh, target gravity that will allow me to get to seven and a half, eight percent. Oh, it smells so good. Can you see my brewing sock? Can see a Malt Miller? Yep, definite dark, slightly burnt caramel coming off of that. Every grain is sacred. So we're just coming to the end of the mash, my sparge water is heating, the colour coming through here looks absolutely amazing. I was so excited to see this kind of burnished orange rust colour, bang on for a red IPA. And then I went to take the second gravity reading and, um, well I think I've made a black IPA. Up to the light, maybe a kind of dark cherry kind of colour. But I've reached 076, very close to my original, target original gravity. I didn't think I'd quite hit that. So everything's going to plan, except possibly the colour. And now we move on to by far the most complicated set of boil additions I've ever done. The first thing we're gonna do is use this stuff. So this is the hop extract I told you about earlier. Um, it's basically the, uh, a distillation of all of the really bitter acids, the alpha acids that are found in hops. And I'm just going to add this and just five mil, five mil of this is going to add, that's a teaspoon by the way, that is going to add uh, 50 IBUs of bitterness, which is why it comes with a warning not to touch your eyes if you've touched it. So this is going straight in. I've had to warm it up in a cup of warm water, give it a shake and then we open it. Intense hop smell. And then I've got a pipette. This feels very uncraft. But looks like caramel. And I've got it on my fingers. Don't rub your eyes, Johnny. That was really satisfying. And then we need another two mil. Now the extract's in and it smells like I'm in a hop processing plant. It's time to get the actual hops, the physical hops sorted. So I've got eight separate additions of three separate hops, but the first three are all Simcoe. So that's relatively easy to deal with. So I've got to weigh out a 10, a 15 and a 20 gram addition that are going in at 30, 15 and five. It's a lovely soft smelling hop. I really do love Simcoe. Next 15 grams for addition two at 15 minutes. Ooh, smells a bit juicy now as the, the bag releases all the aroma that was pent up in there. Uh, and then the final one is 20 grams. There we go. So as long as I don't mix those up, that's gonna get us to about 80 IBU. Why would I say that? Now I'm gonna mix them up. Okay, now the final hop additions with five minutes to go. We've got 20 grams more Simcoe. 20 grams of lovely zesty orangey Amarillo. And then, the first time I brewed with this, Idaho 7, which has a slight coriander, mango, mango chutney thing going on. 
as well as, yeah, lots of marmalade pith. <clears throat> and that goes five minutes, and then we're gonna chill it down to Whirlpool. And so ends the celebration brew. I don't want to do down our achievement of 100,000 subscribers, but it doesn't quite feel like the celebration we had in mind. Brad couldn't be here because we're still in lockdown and I'm still drinking this god damn low alcohol beer. Although I have to say, uh, Holy Faith is really, 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 really good for the strength. Um, the brew went almost exactly to plan. I'm a little bit worried I've made a brown ale, but I'm hoping as it drops a little bit brighter, it might start to turn a little bit red. Uh, I hit basically 076 throughout the brew, which is great. Um, a little bit shy of what I had in the plan, but I kind of um, was expecting that and I wanted the beer a little bit less alcoholic than 8% because that's a double IPA and um, I didn't want to push my yeast that far. So all there's left is for me to pitch the yeast in, get it in the fermenting fridge, and I will see you guys next week with a real beer. <laughs>